Hello, everyone. My name is Lu Jiang. I'm a senior research scientist at Google Research. Today, I would like to talk about our work beyond the synthetic noise, deep learning on controlled noise level. This is joint work with D, Mason, and Willow. OK, let's get started. In this work, we are studying deep learning on noise level. As we know, deep network are very good at memorizing the noise label. This leads to a critical issue since noise labels are inevitable in big data. And the fact that deep network can easily memorize a noise label can result in very poor generalization. Controlled experiments play a critical role in studying noise label. Unlike developing a new drug, like developing a new drug, to really understand it, we need to conduct controlled experiments to test a single variable at a time. In our problem, the most important variable to test is the noise level, which indicates the percentage of example with the incorrect label. Here we show three data sets of noise level at 20, 40, and 80%. As a result, controlled experiments are performed in many existing work. However, existing study only perform controlled experiment on synthetic label, and the real world noise has never been studied in a controlled setting. This is problematic because synthetic and real world noise follow very different distribution. To give you an example, people have found different or even contradictory finding on synthetic label. For example, whether deep networks are robust to massive label noise. Unlike our common understanding, Ronick shows that deep learning is robust to massive label noise. You may wonder which argument is true. Well, there's no clear answer here because a slight change in synthetic label noise setting can result in very different or even contradictory findings. More importantly, a vast majority of the methods were all developed on synthetic noise label. But when these methods are applied on real world industry application, we find that the method that perform well on synthetic noise may not work as well on real world noise label. This is number one motivation for our work. To address this issue, we made three contributions in this work. First, we established the first benchmark of controlled real world label noise from the web. Second, we propose a simple but highly effective method to overcome both synthetic and real world noise label. Finally, we conduct the largest study by far into understanding deep neural network trend on noise level. Let's first look at the, our first contribution, which is a new data set. While other noise type of noise exists, such as image content noise, our work focused on the label noise, which can be further categorized into real world and synthetic label noise. As mentioned, we can construct controlled label noise for synthetic noise, but we only can get uncontrolled label noise for real world noise, like in existing data set such as web vision and the closing one minute. We're gonna talk about that later. In our work, we our goal is to construct controlled label noise for the real world no noise label. But to get into the detail, let's first look at how we construct the controlled synthetic label noise. To do so, people usually start with a well-labeled data set, such as mini image net, and then randomly select P percent of example, independently flip each label to a random incorrect class. Depending on how we flip the label, we can get symmetric or asymmetric noise. Then we can repeat the above process with a different P, which indicates the noise level, and get a series of data sets. This, the process, this process generates the controlled synthetic label noise. And then let's look at how existing work constructs uncontrolled real world label noise. Existing work collects uncontrolled real world noise from the web by querying an image search engine using the class name as a keyword. Here we show some retrieved image for the class ladybug. This process can automatically collect label noise labeled image from the web. But since we do not know the correct image label, the noise level here is not only fixed, but also unknown. That's why existing no web noise is uncontrolled and cannot be used in a control study. Let's look at how we address this problem. First, we follow the exact same procedure to collect the web image with real-world web noise. 
We have each retrieved image annotated by three to five workers using Google Cloud labeling service. Since we know for each image which one has the correct label and which one does not, after getting the image with the incorrect label, we follow the construction of the synthetic dataset with one important difference. We replace the clean image with the incorrect labeled web image while leaving the label unchanged. In this way, we can get the controlled noise label from the web. In, to summary, in summary, we manually annotate around 200,000 images through 800,000 annotations. We establish the first benchmark of controlled web noise label for two classification types, both building on top of public benchmark, that is, the coarse image classification on mini image net and the fine grain classification on Stanford card. The following table shows a detail about our data set. For naming convenience, we will call the label noise from the web red noise and the synthetic label noise the blue noise. The following figure compares the image with blue noise and the red noise. As we see, image with the red noise, which is the noise from the web, have higher similarity to true positive image are at instance level and come from an open vocabulary outside the fixed vocabulary defined in mini image net or Stanford curve. Let's move on to our second contribution, which is new method. The problem here is that given a noisy data set of some unknown noise level, we want to train better models that can generate well on clean test set. Existing work has made a significant contribution to tackle this problem from multiple directions. In this work, we propose a simple yet highly effective method called the mentorment. And we show that our method can overcome both synthetic and real world noise level. The proposed mentorment is inspired by two existing work, MentorNet for curriculum learning and the mix-up for our cynical risk minimization. At a high level, it comprises first step Weight, sample, mix, up, and weight. Let's look at the, this animation. In the first step, we employ a mentor net to compute example weight for each example in the mini batch. After getting the weight, we normalize it into a distribution. In the second step, for each example in the mini batch, we sample a different example using the according to the just the distribution just built. And then we mix up the original example with the newly sampled example to form a new mix up example. In the last step, we feed into this new example to our model to get the loss weight and then finally the weighted loss. The weighted loss will be used to back in the back propagation to train the model. On our new data set, our method all performs strong robust learning baseline under various settings covering different tasks, course image classification on mini image net, and fine grain classification on Stanford car. Different training setting, training from scratch or fine tuning from a pre-trained checkpoint. And of course, different noise level and tabs, including the blue and the red noise. As we note, each cell here in this table computes the mean of 10 different noise level from 0% to 80%. From the table, we can see two things. First, methods that perform well on synthetic noise may not work as well on real world noise label and vice versa. Second, MentorMix is able to overcome both synthetic and real world noise label. Then we compare our method to the state of art result on two public benchmarks. That's, that is the CIFAR of 10 and 100 of synth with synthetic noise on the left and the web vision with real world noise label on the right. Let's pay attention to the result on the web vision data set which is one of the largest data set of the real world uncontrolled noise label. We achieved the best published result on web vision, improving the previous best method by about 3% in terms of precision one. This is significant because web vision used the same validation set as ImageNet. And as we know, 3% improvement over the ImageNet validation is a significant improvement. Okay, let's look at our third contribution about new funding on the web noise label. We conduct the largest study by far into understanding the deep neural network trained on noise label. Our study confirmed existing funding on synthetic label noise and bring forward new funding that may challenge our preconception 
about real world noise level. Here we're going to show three findings. The first one is inspired by the famous finding by Zhang in 2017 that deep networks generate poorly on synthetic label noise. This can be seen from the figure below, which plots the training and the validation accuracy along the training step. Let's pay attention to the colored belt that plots the 95% the confidence interval across 10 different noise levels. The west the width of the belt indicates the accuracy variance as the noise level increases. The wider the belt, the poorer the, poorer the generalization. This figure confirms John's finding on synthetic label noise as we can observe the, the, the wide belt. However, when we compare the red noise in the same experiment setting, we observe a much thinner belt. This observation is consistent on both data set and across setting including training from scratch or fine tuning from a potential point. This result shows that deep network generates much better on the real world web noise label. Our second funding is inspired by APRIT who fund deep networks to learn pattern first on noisy training label. To see that, let's pay attention to the solid line which plots the validation accuracy at 40% noise level. As we see here, the accuracy will first increase and then decrease during training, creating a drop between the peak accuracy and the final accuracy. To better illustrate the phenomenon, we plot the accuracy drop in the y-axis and then the noise level in the x-axis. As we see, the accuracy drop increase with the growth of the noise level for the blue noise, which confirmed the accuracy finding. However, for the red noise, the accuracy drop is insignificant especially on the fine grain classification task on Stanford car, where the drop almost approached zero. This result indicates that deep network may not learn pattern first on real world web noise data. Our third observation is inspired by COVID, who found that ImageNet architecture generalized on clean training label when the networks are fine tuned. We verify this finding also hold on noisy label. To do that, we test seven different architecture from mobile net to efficient net. We plot their architecture accuracy on the image net in the X axis and the accuracy on the downstream noisy training task in the Y axis. As shown, there is a net correlation between these two axes, suggesting that better architecture enjoy better generalization on noisy label. These results show that image net architecture generalize on noisy label and when the networks are fine-tuned. Okay, let's look at some our conclusion. In this work, we proposed the first benchmark of real-world controlled label noise from the web and a simple yet effective method called MentorNet to overcome both synthetic and real-world noise label. By conducting the largest experiment by far, we we find we come, we arrive at the following interesting observation. First, deep networks may not, may not learn pattern first, but generalize much better on the real world label, label noise from the web. Second, the method that perform well on synthetic noise may not work quite well on the real world noise label from the web. Third, advanced pre-trained architecture are better overcoming the noise label, both for the synthetic and the real world noise label. Finally, further using mentor mix yields the best result. So thanks for watching, and we're gonna release our code and the data set at the following link.